Hi everybody! This video introduces you to Kindred, which is the first novel that we're reading for this class. Before I talk about the novel, I'm going to talk just a little bit about Octavia Butler, uh, who's the author of Kindred. She born, was born in 1947 and died in 2006, uh, so a lot of her stuff is fairly recent insofar as it was written in the sort of second part of the 20th century. She's primarily known as a science fiction writer. Uh, her stories deal with things like aliens uh, and outer space and uh, sort of apocalyptic scenarios. And uh, those novels and stories have won her numerous awards, including the prestigious Hugo and Nebula Awards multiple times. Uh, her work also explores a lot of themes related to survival uh, and the heroism of survivors. This is something that she explores in her science fiction works, uh, dealing with characters who are sort of uh, survive apocalyptic events uh, or who end up on planets and have to find ways to survive. Uh, but it's also a theme that she explores a lot in Kindred, uh, which is not really a science fiction novel, although sometimes it gets classified as such. So Kindred is a novel that we are reading. It was published in 1979. Uh, it's sometimes classified as a science fiction or fantasy novel because it has elements of time travel. Uh, however, uh, it's not really a straightforward science fiction novel or fantasy novel, uh, as you'll figure out when you start reading it. It's also sometimes considered to be a neo-slave narrative. If you remember from maybe your American literature classes uh, or even history classes, a slave narrative uh, is a kind of work um, that was written by American slaves uh, who escaped captivity and then described their experiences. And this novel is sometimes described as sort of a neo or a sort of new kind of slave narrative and that it describes uh, the fictional account of a woman who sort of travels back to the past, um, experiences slavery for herself and then comes back to the present and describes her experiences. So it's, it's sometimes sort of described as drawing on and playing with the genre of the slave narrative as well. Um, the novel, uh, Octavia Butler once said that it was written in response to an African-American friend that she had who said that he felt ashamed of his ancestors who accepted their status as slaves instead of a running away from slavery or fighting slavery. So her novel is an attempt to sort of combat that, that view of history and provide a different kind of account of what American history looked like during the pre-Civil War South and specifically what the experience of slavery looked like for a large group of Americans. And just as a warning, uh, this novel does include some pretty detailed descriptions of violence and also attempted rape. Uh, and, and alludes to rape itself in a couple of times as well. So um, just be aware of that, and if that's something that you're sensitive to, um, you may want to take that into account uh, when reading the novel. I have some questions for you to consider uh, to sort of keep in the back of your mind as you're reading the novel, um, and to maybe some, take some notes about. Um, these are questions that are also will also be related to the discussion post that I'll be asking you to make uh, in the coming weeks. Um, so this is just sort of a heads up and things to think about as you read the novel. The first uh, question I have uh, has to do with the protagonist uh, whose name is Dana. So Kindred figures are, features a protagonist, Dana, who was repeatedly taken to the past and forced to experience history for herself. Uh, how do her experiences change her view on life in the antebellum, the pre-Civil War, which is a term for the pre-Civil War South? So this question is asking you to think about how Dana's experiences sort of change her view of history. And there's places where she specifically talks about this. She talks about how she used to think of history or what she can remember about history, and then how what she's seeing and feeling and experiencing changes that or brings it to life in certain kinds of ways. The second question has to do with Dana's husband, Kevin who at one point is taken to the past with her. So I ask you uh, what his initial impressions of life in the pre-Civil War South are like, and then also how does um, his view of life in the pre-Civil War South change based on his experience? So how does his view of what life is like change? So pay attention to you know, what he sort of initially thinks about it and then how that evolves um, based on his experiences. 
Uh, the next question has to do with another character. So one of the central characters of the novel is Ruf Rufus Whalen, uh, who's the son of a plantation owner. And he pops up again and again and again in this novel. So I want you to consider how Butler characterizes him. Um, and thinking back to her vocabulary, is that characterized um, is how an author sort of shows us the personality and the sort of unique characteristics of a character. So, you know, what does sort of Butler reveal to us about what kind of person the Rufus is? And then uh, how does he as a character change over the course of the novel? And then related to that, I also want you to think about how Rufus's relationship with Dana changes over the course of the novel. And it does quite a bit. So pay attention to that. Um, I also want you to think back to that uh, sort of anecdote I gave you earlier. So as I said, Butler wrote this novel in part to, to counteract stereotypes of submissive, sla submissive slaves. So how are the slaves on the Wayland plantation characterized and why don't they run away? Um, and you can sort of think about those as being related to that statement that Butler made about trying to combat, combat those, those stereotypes of submissive slaves. Um, also, I want you to think a little bit about sort of how race is characterized in this novel. Uh, so in the pre-Civil War South, uh, one's social and legal, legal status depended on one's race, right? Whether one was sort of considered black or white. So which characters in Kindred are considered black and which characters are considered white? And are there any characters that challenge the view that people are either black or white? And if so, uh, who are these characters and how do they challenge that idea of race? <coughs> Excuse me. And then finally, uh, I want you to think about how reading Kindred has changed your view of history, uh, if it's changed it. Uh, and it, if it has changed your view of history or, you know, sort of brought certain things to life uh, or made you rethink certain things, you know, how has it done so? How has it changed the way that you sort of think about history and specifically the history of the American South? So uh, I hope that you enjoy reading Kindred, uh, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say about it in discussion and in your journals.